it's about that time. We're going to be joined by Monty from the uh, Corpus Christi Spook Central. He's up on the costume lock, and it's lights out, folks. Well, first off, I really want to thank you guys so much for allowing us to come in here and investigate. And it was, you know, we didn't have lots of personal experience, but the evidence really shines through and uh, I can't wait for you guys to uh, to hear it so I guess we'll go ahead and start on a lot of the EVPs that we had gotten uh, certain areas that we had concentrated on and I will pass it on over here to Sean. Okay so for EVPs the first one is going to be when we were doing the ghost box section um, and you're going to hear it say gotcha after we asked a question. So basically, um, I don't remember exactly what the question was. I think it we might have been, is there anybody here that wants to make their presence known? Or is there anybody here that wants to communicate with us? And a voice, we don't know who it was, of course, came through and said, gotcha. <laughs> and just to explain a little bit um, what a ghost box is, is it's kind of like uh, if you've ever sat in your car before and you've changed the channels really fast and it skips through yeah, every, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's scanning through all those channels within a second. And uh, the theory is that spirits or ghosts can come through that frequency using their energy and actually you can hear voices. Because if you get a full word or sentence, well, you're only on a radio station for a split of a second. Right. So how in the world would you get a full name or yeah. a sentence or something like that? Because... It's legible word. Exactly. So the, the gotcha is one of those like, well, there's no way, you know, it coming through that it was on a radio station that quick to get that long of a word that it's gotcha. And to be that clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the next one was actually something we got on the recorder. It was something that came across not on one recorder, but we got it on three different recorders that were recording in the same room. And it was after I asked a question of, are you being shy now that there's multiple people up here? Because there's more people in the room. Did you hear it? It comes through right here and it says, yeah. yeah. Because there's more people in the room. It's, it's clear. I mean, it's mm -hmm. on that waveform. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then the reason why it's actually, uh, it's just amplified so you're able to hear it. It was sure. a, very, a very low one, so we amplify it just enough where it doesn't Thank distort you. it. Because we were, get, we kept getting responses on um, going on the whole time we were up there, and then all of a sudden, when a bunch of people got in the room, everything kind of slowed down and got quiet. Yeah. And so then it was like, okay, well. Let me ask if they're being shy, basically, now, because we've had the story, of course, of the shoes that you told us up there, so then we kind of think, well, maybe the person appears kind of a trickster, so when there's a lot of people in the room, they don't want to make themselves known to be up there. Yeah. So that was kind of a cool little catch. And then we'll go on to the yes one. That was another one that was captured in the wardrobe closet. A lot of the evidence is from that area. Okay. Yeah, that was very active. And I, I knew that that's yeah. really the heart of this entire scenario, too. Yeah. And so then on this one here, again, is on the recorder, and we can't really t make out what they're saying. It sounds like a bunch of whispers. Maybe you guys will be able to kind of tell us what they're saying. It's really weird, but you can hear like it's a drawn out breath. For sure. I'll play it again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Some part of me will say it sounds kind of like, get out. But it's just, it's so, it's just one of those, I know it's none of us. You can hear that it's really close to the recorder. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just one of those unknowns. That was, yeah, you know, that handheld recorder, right? That's, that's what it's And this one was actually one that I had sitting on one of the storage bins um, back on that left side of the room by all the older items, like the furs and all the suits and stuff. Right. And, and to me, when I listen to it over and over, it almost has like an accent twang to it, like of something way back in maybe like the and 1900s. Female community. Yeah. Right. So. And in that area, we get a lot of hits on the, uh, the REM pod kept going off just for no reason. Yeah. And, you know, you have to have energy to break that plane on the, the equipment in order for it to go off. Right. And that was also in that area. Are you attached to some item up here? Are you okay? That so, shouldn't be happening. No. How many of you are there?
get out. Welcome back, everyone. We're here live at the Harbor Playhouse. Yeah, even before we went back, it said, welcome back. So Yeah, literally, we heard, welcome back. So this, again, is when we're doing the ghost box. Um, we're asking who's in the room with us. And we actually got three. Three different names. So I don't know if these names might mean something to you guys. Right. So over here is Robert, Yvette, and then it's Pete. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if those names hold any, you know, with the here at the Harbor Playhouse. Right. Well, all of those names are, are certainly names of people who have been in productions here. Um, you know, Pete, certainly, plenty of times. Mm -hmm. um, and Robert. There's been many Roberts, right? But there's not, there, there's no one by those names that are, like, here on a regular basis, at least not now. Right. And are those people that are still with us? Are they people that have passed on? Pete or is, Pete is still with us. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking maybe if that might be something. And that could right. easily just be somebody in that room that's just communicated with them or tried to make you know yeah. communication with them when they were up in that room. Yeah. Um, so then another one um, on the ghost box that we got was thank you, which is kind of neat too in its own right. And I think, I don't even remember what we were talking about, to be honest. I think we were just kind of asking um, if they wanted us to go ahead and leave for the night, you know, if they were kind of tired of us being there. And that's what they just simply said, thank you. You're welcome. And it's amazing that you can hear that in the moment right. and be able to answer it, yeah. you know. And of course, the, the next one, Hey Doll. That one I listen to over and over because that's something that I say on a constant basis. <laughs> so to hear it come through a ghost box was kind of like, oh wow, you know, I'm not the only one that uses that lingo. <laughs> and again, it was a male voice. Yeah. And I think that was just, we were just having general conversation. It wasn't any questions. It was more of, is there anybody here? You know, who's with you? How many of you are there? Right. And then it just came through and said, hey, doll. I mean. Now I guess we'll move on to the video evidence that we got. Well, so we're gonna save the hello for last because that that one blew me away. I, <laughs> no, okay. She was at work. I'm like, you've got to hear this. She's like, I'm at work. I can't. I'm, I'm a little busy, <laughs> yeah. but give me a minute and I'll check it out. So uh, <laughs> when they were up there, we had two of our investigators up in that area, and uh, we'd gotten some whispers. Uh, there, it's definite voices that you can hear, but you just they're so low and so soft, you just can't make it out what they're saying. Yeah. I mean, it's so it's like right here, but it's so soft. Yeah. You know, and this is in the same area over here. We had our REM pod, and then this area over here seems to be the one area that had the most activity where we've captured a lot of the evidence. And here's another whisper. It says, "Hi." Why do they There. Somebody just whispered. And she actually yeah. heard it. I heard it with my own ears, but and that's when yeah. I asked, did anybody just whisper? But it's so low, but you can still hear it with headphones, it's a lot better. Do they belong to you? Because I'm sitting over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, over here, we, we actually got uh, some of the ghost box sessions that we were doing. How many of you are there? We could actually hear how many are the number five, and then it says get out. How many of you are there? Get out. I mean, it's, it's 
pretty clear. That was extremely <laughs> clear. And, uh, and I you get the reaction from everybody also going like, okay. <laughs> and I really don't think on a radio station you would hear someone get out. So it's, it's one of those like, okay. Yeah. Now here's one that's kind of funny. They were actually up there and there was a giggling and laughter coming through the ghost box. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a, a piece of garment here that belongs to you? telling us a story about the, uh, the chucks and the sneakers. This, this is the room, and this is one of the spots that Josh brought me up here. And Josh is here in the back as well, uh, that folks just don't like to come here alone. And I tell you what, it, it's, really, it's a really thick feeling up here. And uh, so let, let's see if uh, we can get anything else going on. I'll let y'all go ahead and do y'all's mm -hmm. thing yeah. here, and let's see what we can grab. This one, of course, is the time that we were up there, and you were actually starting to ask questions, mm -hmm. and we yeah. the name. your name was actually called out through yeah. the ghost box. <laughs> And it was it was pretty clear. Because when you get something like that, it's it's an intelligent type of haunting. It's something that's mm -hmm. wanting to communicate. It knows who you are. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're you're here constantly going through every you know inch of this building. So next time when you're walking around just mm -hmm. think maybe you're not yeah. alone so but yeah it, it's definitely a really <laughs> great like, catch thanks. <laughs> Because it's very odd that we'll be investigating somewhere and somebody else's name within that building mm -hmm. comes through the ghost yes. box. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. happen often. Like yeah. one of our names will come through, um, but it's odd that somebody attached to that location's mm -hmm. name comes through. So when I heard that, I was like, whoa, wait a minute, that's new. Yeah. yeah. Now, when we deal with EVPs, you, we can catch them on video, we can also catch them on audio, and there's different cr classifications for EVPs, you know, different grades between a one and a three. And this one, no cameras were up there yet during the live, and it was just Shauna, another one of the investigators. And, uh, well, I'll just play it, let you it's listen. Randomly in the middle of these portals. Uh, up that line. Just go. Hello. That was neither Shauna or the other investigator, and they're the only two up there at that time. And that's what we would classify as a Class A EVP. And not only did we capture it on the video, we captured it on audio. Mm. Randomly in the middle of these woods. Uh, I've got mine just going. Hello. Well, and it's and now, in between us talking. Now, if you, crazy. Yeah, if you listen to it on audio, where the recorder's next to Shauna, and then listen to it on video it's again. Randomly in the middle of these woods. Uh, I've got mine just going. Hello. It's actually closer to Shauna because she actually has the audio recorder right there. Mm -hmm. But none of them, if someone had came upstairs to say, oh, hello. Of course. You would have noticed that nobody acknowledged yeah. someone coming up. Yeah. 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 And I'm very expressive, so I would have noticed and said something. Of course. <laughs> hello. <laughs> sounds very, it sounds very direct. Yeah. Um, it's a very f uh, uh, if it friendly. If someone on the stair, was that, I don't know, is that on the phone or is that a handheld? Handheld audio recorder, recorder yeah. Handheld audio recorder. Um, it would have been a more, I'm trying to explain, just because I, I do this kind of work. Yeah. I've done audio engineering. Uh, you would have heard more of a reflection of it off of a wall. Exactly. It sounded more direct as if it were in front of the recorder. Exactly. Yeah. So it just sounds very direct, like if it were you. Yeah, yeah like right. I was having a yeah. conversation, yeah. yeah. And like I said, if you look at sh Shauna's face, nowhere does you see her go look over or, oh, you know, who's up here? Right. Randomly in the middle of these quarters. See, the quarters in her hand. Uh, I've got mine just going. Hello. Almost for the last time, yeah. And it's just so, yeah. so quick, so fast. And it's yeah. like, 
Do I believe that the, the room up there is haunted? No, but I do think there's high levels of paranormal activity, and I do believe it's intelligent. Yes. I think it's trying to make some type of communication. It's wanting to let people know it's there. And that, you know, when we did another investigation uh, a year ago, um, we had gotten an EVP just like this. It was just so clear, and it's rare to capture something like this. I was saying. And when, and I'm sitting there, and I'm listening to this, and it was like that moment of, where's my phone? You got to listen to this. I, I need. <laughs> did, did the other investigator oh. say it? Please tell me the other investigator. And I'm said like, it. no, because I would have said something yeah. to her. When he sent it to me, I was like, wait a minute, this isn't her. It's not me. Yeah. But then when I was listening to the rest of the audio and we captured it again, I was like, wow, okay, so it did happen. Yeah. You know, like I said, we didn't have a lot of experiences throughout the night, but the evidence just, it speaks for itself. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be uh, someone that likes to maybe call out names, just like, you know, with Josh, our uh, building supervisor, Juan Mendoza. Um, he has, he spends the night here by himself because he cleans after the show. Mm -hmm. And there's been several times that he has heard someone call his name. And there's no one here, you know, three in the morning. And he's not, you know, threatened by it or, or anything, but it's just kind of like, you know, there it goes again. Mm -hmm. Earlier, I, you were talking about a story about a shoe incident. If you wouldn't mind elaborating a little more about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one story that really sticks out was me because it uh, was pretty much just me and um, one young kid that was here with me uh, trying to finish up costumes for a show. All the children were supposed to have some kits, and it was we were like in tech week, and it was like everyone should have their shoes. And the kid came to me and said, I still don't have my shoes. And uh, he said, I think there might be some in the costume loft. And as you know, we have a big rack of shoes up there. I said, I don't think so, but okay, let's go look one more time. So um, we were the only ones in the building at this time. His mom had dropped him off. So we went upstairs to the costume loft and we walked down the center row, went back to the um, shoe rack and we walked back and forth, back and forth and looked and looked and looked. And uh, absolutely there were no kids, except maybe a size 13 for a grown man certainly would not work for this child. So I'm like, I'm, dude, I don't know what to tell you. We're gonna have to you know, try to find you some and uh, we're gonna have to buy some, I guess. So we turn around and we go right back down the same row that we came up and midway down was a pair of kids sitting there placed perfectly facing us. And the kid freaked out. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> that would be one of those moments like, wait, that wasn't, I totally, know that wasn't there. Totally freaked out. And um, yeah, so there's been several instances like that of random things lost and then found. Many things in the sewing loft and costume loft. Another situation that was really interesting to me, but this was in the auditorium. Um, we were running rehearsals. It was actually for Susical. This was about, I don't know, 11 years ago. And um, one of the characters used a big black feather boa and because she plays an eagle. And that boa was gonna be sewn to the end of her costume to make the feathers. But during rehearsal, she was wearing it around her neck just to get the feeling of the feathers, right? So we were letting her do that. And the end of the show, she told me, she said, I cannot find my feather boa. And we were upset because it was expensive and we needed it to sew onto her costume. And I said, well, you know, hopefully uh, it'll turn up. If not, we'll have to buy another one. So <clears throat> everyone left and it was about four or five hours later because we stayed late to work on the set and there was maybe just three people in there. And I walked into the auditorium just to kind of sit and get a visual of the, of the set. And I picked a random seat far into the middle of the auditorium. And I sat down and when I did, I felt something around my ankles. And I looked and you, I couldn't see it because it was black, but I reached down and it was that feather ball. Oh wow. oh wow. And it was right there. Why did I pick that seat? Why was it even there? You know, yeah. she, had ne she had never sat in the audience. She had been wearing it on stage in the dressing room. So those are two instances where something was lost and something was found, but was placed directly in my path. Has there been any more type of activity since we've been here Halloween night uh, that, um, that, that's been reported in the certain areas? I haven't had any, but I mean, we've just been so crazy busy. I haven't had too much like being up in the sewing loft or, you know, sitting here at, at quiet time. 
Um, so I don't think so. But of course, you know the the current cast that are here late rehearsing and things like that, potentially. Now Juan, um, I was just speaking to Juan before y'all got here because he had just finished up and left for his shift. And he told me that um, it was very recently, it was like maybe three nights ago or so, that his name was called. Really? Yeah. Interesting about Juan, too. Well, he's a wonderful character, and we love him very much here at Harbor, but his grandfather was a shaman. Really? Absolutely. That's interesting. And, um, you know, was raised around that. And uh, a lot of people have kind of called him out throughout his life as, you know, just having something a little little special you know? right so i well, wouldn't doubt it since you're all you know you're always here you're always working all around the place what do you think about the evidence that we've captured especially your name being called i mean <laughs> what, what do you think about that yeah i mean that's pretty interesting um yeah it does it doesn't seem you know threatening um you know I and mean, you know i do hear things here it, you know, it's it's and sometimes it's kind of hard to tell us that's something you know I often say that I know all the noises this building makes because I've just been here so long and I can usually pinpoint what that is that made the noise. Um, There's a lot of these things in the recording I, I don't really have a, a peg for as far as that kind of stuff. Yeah. The noises that the building makes that would be causing that noise. Mm -hmm. um, one interesting thing that we're finding these in the costume loft is anyone familiar with acoustics knows that fabrics absorb sound exactly like if there were you know something making noise like i go up there to do voiceovers for shows because it's so quiet you know it's like a recording studio that mm -hmm. foam padding so hearing those voices come in from there meaning you know there's there's got to be something else with you know creating that source and like i said you know when we do investigations like this nine times out of ten you know we have some answers but it leaves us with ten times more questions